Welcome back to Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, not World of Light this time. This time we're going to be doing Joker's new Spirit Board. So let's get right into it. Okay, Morgana's first, but he's a three star. Should I start with the one stars or should I... Hmm... I might as well go with the order they're recruiting. I think you get Ryuji before Morgana, but anyway. Ryuji being Captain Falcon, I guess that makes sense. And there's also a Mii Gunner, probably in a pirate outfit to represent Captain Kid. Uh, on the Luigi's Mansion stage, I'm trying to think of what the reference to that is. Maybe it's supposed to be... Because if you're going for Kamoshida's Castle, that'd probably be Dracula's Castle. And starts with a home run bat does make sense. So I think these are all going to be defeat the main fighter to win. They're going to have Persona, um, like, uh, uh, they're going to have a backup fighter representing their Persona. And I'm going to be using Joker for all of this. And I'll use his student outfit this time, because I use his regular outfit for the classic mode. And I'll be using spirits of roughly, um, equal power here. Not going to go completely over the top. Well, yeah, let's fight the blunt weapon specialist with a blunt weapon. Joker looks so weird carrying this. Okay, I am actually I've actually been playing a lot of uh, Spirit Board with with the uh, the uh, the Joy Con, so I'm actually not used to using a GameCube controller. <laughs> but I guess I adjusted to it reasonably well. Battering items power up makes sense for him. So yeah, that's one Spirit out of the way. Uh, yeah, I guess Morgana joined next. And yeah, Pikachu Libre makes a lot of sense because uh, Ikue Otani is the Japanese voice of Morgana and Pikachu, and also Tiki in the uh, Japanese version of games that she appears in. Uh, Defeat Main Fighter, High Winds makes sense, and it makes sense for it to be Mementos as well because, well, spoilers, kind of. So yeah, let's not use the Black Knight, that'd be kind of too cheap here. A lot of people said it would have been great if the floor was sleep inducing here, but unfortunately no. Ready? But at least they- wow, you are small. Also the irony of a cat being represented by a mouse. I'm sure someone's pointed that out. Gotta remember the range on that. Yeah, switching between Joker and characters like, um... Oh, and of course you have an all club because of the wind- because of wind attacks, but yeah. Switching between Joker and characters who have more range, like Lucina. Should be using Rebel's Guard a lot more, but I don't even need to because I have Arsene now. My Wings of Rebellion will circumvent the... Uh, yeah, the High Winds. And you've got Tetrakhan. Tetrakhan is really fun. I should probably be paying more attention. I wonder if that could edge guard. And Morgana has forced us to go to sleep once. Let's see how many times he manages to do that. Thankfully there's no time limit on these. So something that I will actually mention is the whole Morgana go to sleep meme. I've, I know I've said this before, before at some point, but that never affected me because in my first playthrough of P5, I was following a guide and really the only time Morgana forcing you go, to go to sleep has any kind of like negative impact on you is if you rent DVDs and you're forced to get late fees because of that. The guy I was following never rents DVDs at all. So, yeah. See, originally I was going to wait to do a playthrough of P5 until there was a better uh, Max Confidant guide out there that actually, because the Max Confidant guide that I followed, uh, Go to Sleep Count 2, was by, I think it was by Kill Scott Kill, but it's... It's, like, you miss out on a lot with that guide. Like, you never go to the planetarium, I think, and you never go fishing. I had to actually make a separate save file just to get the fishing achievements. Like, there's a lot that the guide skips out on, and there's a lot of free time at the very end of that one, so I feel like more could have been worked into it. In fact, like, I ended up maxing Ryuji earlier than the guide said you should, so clearly there is definite leeway room. But now that Persona 5 Royal has been announced, I'm obviously going to have to do my playthrough of the game on that, and that's going to require a completely different Max Confidant guide, most likely. 
yeah, get behind you when you use uh, when you use that. Do you need to remember though that it's just defeat the main fighter to win, so as long as I get the mouse, I should be fine here. Yeah, I really like the Arsene boosted Aegon. Aha, I have I was about to say I have resist elect, but I don't have resist. I was about to say resist strike, but yeah, no, that would be physical, because in P5 there's no separate physical elements, it's just physical and gun. Which I still like better than P4 just lumping everything into physical, but, uh, anyway. Ready? Go! There we go, got you. Sword attack, yeah that makes sense. Probably should have had some kind of healing effect. I never expected Morgana to be the main healer of the party when I first played, um, when, I, when P5 was first announced. Anyway, Arn, I can't believe I never even considered Zero Suit Samus for this, although Peach as your persona is pretty, kind of, I guess sort of makes sense. But... I can't believe I didn't realize, like, cause I keep forgetting Zero Suit Samus has a whip. I was like, oh yeah, the red clothed blonde haired female Robin, because that looks a lot like Arn. Actually, come to think of it, yeah, that looks a lot like Arn too, so yeah, I, I forgot that Zero Suit Samus had a red outfit. And again, I totally forgot that Zero Suit Samus had a whip. Yeah, Zero Suit Samus is not a character I use very often. Oh, that's a giant fire, yeah, it makes sense for you to have a giant fire peach. Can I walk off ledges you? Yes, I can! <laughs> well, that was easy. Fire attack up, oh, makes sense. Arn was an interesting party member in P5. Arn and Ryuji, I found, they were kind of, like, sort of magic harp characters. Either they got a lot better later in the game. I guess Yusuke is next. And, of course, he's Krom. And, uh, Goemon being DDD, I suppose that makes sense. And I, I'm pretty sure I know who the assist trophy is going to be here. Garchomp. Well, we're fighting the ice user with Garchomp. That should be a terrible idea, but it actually works here. But yeah, uh, Yusuke is the same voice actor as Krom in both Japanese and English, and he's not the only character to be like that. Yeah, because, okay, so here are some other characters who are voiced by Sugita in Japanese and uh, Matthew Mercer in English. Uh, Alvin from... I knew it would be Vince. Alvin from Tales of Exilia is has that voice in both languages. Uh, I know there's, I'm sure there's at least one other, but there's also. Should have grappled with you. Wow, my damage percentage is a lot higher than I expected it to be. The one role that's actually sub Wow, I'm not used to a GameCube controller. One role that's actually not shared with them though is that Sugita voices uh, Oliver in Fire Emblem Heroes and Oliver was uh, dubbed by Richard Epcar, not Matthew Mercer. Well, I feel like Matthew Mercer probably could have pulled it off. But yeah, the moment that I, that I heard that Yusuke was voiced by Tomokazu Sugito in Japanese, I knew that he'd be voiced by Matthew Mercer in English. And yeah, completely called that. So, and then I ended up calling this Spirit Battle too, because I had a feeling it would be Krom. Krom with a, with a Vince assist. Didn't expect the DDD though. Because yeah, I was wondering if they'd go with that kind of gimmick for, the, for these Persona Spirit Battles, like having their actual Personas, well, someone representing their Personas helping out. Like, I have a feeling that with, um, I've got your Persona, but that does not defeat you. It's kind of like P4 Arena, where you can Persona break people, but they can still fight. 
should be some kind of achievement for winning while having a sculpture drawn over you. But yeah, I always thought that if I guess was a spirit battle, she'd be a gold, um, a gold rob with, uh, Palutena assisting her. So now Makoto, now with how much favoritism she gets in... Uh, with how much favoritism that she gets with her exclusive weapon in P4, I'm really surprised... She's only a one-star spirit here. But yeah, you having a Wario assist is kind of funny, and it sort of makes sense. Ah, yes, I'm fighting my favorite pairing for Joker by uh, having Joker with flowers. Uh, giving her flowers, yeah. Oh, and it's an invisible Wario <laughs> with the bike. Okay, yeah, that that make, that's pretty cool. But that's, I admit, that's pretty cool. <laughs> but yeah, I know there's a lot of backlash against Makoto because of all the huge amounts of best girl hype that she gets, but she is my favorite pairing for Joker overall. Even though I actually think her confidant is quite bad, like I have videos of some of the confidants uh, on YouTube and I give my full thoughts on it in the description of that video. I actually think her confidant is pretty bad, but I just think her story scenes with Joker are really good and I just think personality wise, she sort of fits the best with him I feel. And yeah, Futaba is next. And of course she's inkling, the memes have come full circle. I wonder if it was a direct Inkling reference. Like, it might it might have been, because her design is very similar to Inkling's. It, it had to be a reference. Ready, and we're- oh, of course it's the- it's the desert, because, yeah. I'm not- into, I just- thinking about it, why didn't Makoto use the, um, Dr. Wily? Okay, maybe it's just generally retro game characters that she summons as assist trophies? And Galagas. Yeah, I have a feeling the theme here is just retro game characters. The problem, though, with Galagas is that they make this fight very, very easy if, um... If she ends up getting hit by one of them. Now, you can KO Dr. Wily, if I'm remembering right, so... Oh, no. Don't hit me, please. Oh, okay, I'm gonna have to get ready to dodge that. Nice perfect shield there. And there she goes. No! She did not go! Almost ran into that for a second. I'm kind of out of practice with Joker, actually, so apologies if I'm playing really badly here. I'm just trying to give my thoughts on these characters while... Looks like it's just Dr. Wily, actually. While... Can I Makara Khan Dr. Wily's projectiles? Smashing time. Nope, didn't get out of it in time. I should have got a cis killer, actually. And begging time! Except I'm gonna have to beg now, because I'm gonna... Watch out. Oh! Walk right into that, just barely. Oh, I did manage to mash out of that, out of it that time. I think the more damp, like the higher your percentage is, the the um the harder it is to mash out of that. And there we go! Critical health attack up. Uh, I suppose that can reference what a shadow represents in a way, but... Anyway... Yahara would be next after Futaba, wouldn't she? Pink villager, items in large numbers, with Daisy, I suppose that makes sense. It should be Daisy starting with a gun though, and I have a feeling that's what it will be. We'll see. Probably a super scope or a, um, or the ray gun. 
Haru was an interesting party member in a way. She's kind of like Ken from P3 done right in terms of her skill set because she had a lot of skills that, that she could potentially learn and a lot of possible... Yes, of course, it's her with a gun, yeah. Makes sense. But yeah, a lot of potential skills that she could learn. And there were several different like possible builds you could go with for her. Oh, and of course she's using the trees because gardening! Because she has the gardening and she, she lets you make vegetables. Okay, yeah, no, that's a nice reference. I like this one. Though I, I would rarely end up using her vegetable garden in the actual game because it just took up time and, I don't know, it was sort of a little bit... I remember it took a while to actually get that all the way up to the point where the items would get really useful. One thing I was going to say earlier was that uh, someone said that Elizabeth saying Mega Dola on is one of the few times that someone actually says the name of a Persona skill, like in full voice acting, which makes it hard to know how to pronounce them. But Joker obviously says Aha and Ega on in this game. But yeah, like despite it, the series having a lot of, you know, quote unquote anime tropes, calling your attacks is not one that Persona uses very often. I am not looking forward to the full Phantom Thieves fight. But anyway, you. Uh, yeah, Marth with Pit makes sense. Oh, inverted controls. Interesting. Yeah, I'm kind of silent here because I... The song choice is sort of spoilers. With a beam sword. Actually, that's pretty cool. That makes sense. I'm still wondering how uh, Akechi will behave in, um, as in like how he'll play in, in, in Q2. How different he'll be from Naoto, because his skill set in the actual P5 is very similar to Naoto. Then again, a lot of characters in um, the original Q played very similarly, like Shinjiro and Junpei, they didn't really differentiate those two very much. Aha, I have your sword! Actually, no, wait, a second sword spawned for me. And gone. That wasn't too bad. Item gravitation. I forget if Robin Hood had any ability like that in his home game. Okay, I've heard the eagle battle is really cool. Car I knew you'd be ice climbers. You take serious damage after a little while, probably referencing the fact that uh, if you don't do deal a certain amount of damage to them within eight turns in their super boss fight, they hit you with an all-out attack. Although that case is just instant death. Time battle also references that. <laughs> yeah, let's just go full on with critical uh, buffs. But yeah, I actually like the way they handled the Justine and Caroline, although I don't like the fact that uh, immunities were not, like, and Reflect was not banned in that fight, like with Elizabeth, because, uh, in that case, yeah, I've seen that fight trivialized so badly with just Reflectors. Speaking of which, if I get my Persona, I can show that here. Because, yeah, in the Super Boss fight, Justin and Caroline really do not like Reflect at all. Oh, and of course it's a time battle. And got you! You have to KO both of them at the same time in the original fight, but not here. But yeah, I do like how they had that kind of gating, pro uh, gating process where... If you don't deal a certain amount of damage to them uh, uh, within eight, <laughs> within six turns, they just straight up kill you because yeah, you wouldn't really be able to beat them at a lower level anyway. Or you know, if you're not like, it's just to show that you aren't strong enough to beat them at that point. Anyway, like I said, I've heard very interesting things about this one. Start with 300% damage. You are healed significantly after a little while. I wonder if that's the whole rehabilitation thing, like that you're gradually sort of working that off and working your way towards redemption in that way. Anyway, defeat the main fire to win and assist trophies constantly spawn, which references him being the master of the Velvet Room and, you know, being a master of summoning things. Didn't really expect Robin for Igor. I was kind of expecting Ganondorf, but... But we also have a bunch of Ridleys. I'm not actually sure what the bunch of Ridleys are supposed to represent here. Ricky. 
Oh, I have just rumored that I don't have um, Tetracon and Makarakon. Aha! I just got a Boofodine on you! Okay, now Igor himself has shown himself, and there goes the Ridley. <laughs> that was a weird ledge grab. Oh no, not Springman. AKA a character who the Lord of Salt probably wanted to get in over Joker. I feel like I probably could have directional influenced that, but oh well. That that is a pretty fun fight, but yeah, me being as big a fan of this series as I am, I'm, I don't, I have no idea what the Ridleys are. Might be a reference to Eagle's appearances in Persona 1 and 2, but I'm not entirely sure. It's a cool idea, though, that you start with a really high percent and have to fight off some enemies uh, in this really weakened state before you get to the real fight. Okay, who do I got? Who do I got? Who do I got supporting me? <laughs> the Burrowing Snaggerets. Of the... I'm not entirely sure what kind of the Burrowing Snagger would be, actually. And everyone's cheering for me, and there we go! <laughs> Joker was powered up by everyone cheering for him. It's the ending of Persona 5. Chant of Double Final Smash. Oh, well, I'm really annoyed at myself that I haven't come up with an arcana for the Burrowing Snagger, but anyway. I knew it would be this song. So yeah, all of them, suddenly Final Smash. Uh, this is ba this and Daybreak part, which might be a reference to the Daybreakers. I think I actually mentioned that earlier. Oh boy, this is going to be a thing. I suppose KO's heal damage will be useful. <sighs> Seems like this is going to be an even worse version of Geno, and considering how badly, of a, how bad of a time I had against Geno. Alright, oh, you have super armor when you're charging that. More thieves have appeared. You're gonna try and combo me into that, aren't you? We must save the Phantom Thieves for they are being led by an imposter joker. Oh no, there's Arn with fire. And what? <laughs> what are our feet doing? <laughs> okay, that was weird. Okay, Persona. And I have the Negadolon Cannon! They seem to have got wise to my counters though. But I've got wise to their attempts to that was really close. Oh I'm stupid, I yeah, if he'd, like, smash attack me, I would have been pretty much dead there. Aha! Only got one of them, though. Let's summon the real Phantom Thieves to defeat the fake Phantom Thieves! That's probably not a KO, though. Nope, definitely not a KO. Where am I? Wow. Um, okay, yeah, I completely lost track of where I was. I thought it was Captain Falcon there. Okay, one fail already. I remember back when this song was one of the only things they knew about P5. Well, that was after that first trailer that was just um, a bunch of chairs and you are slave, want emancipation, and that was all we knew. I still, like, remember, the, the initial P5 trailer was such a cool moment because nobody expected the Phantom Thief thing at all. I suppose you could say we never saw a coming. I don't really get that meme, honestly, but there are a lot of memes that I don't really get. Anyway. Okay, there goes Morgana. Must get the Mega Dollar on cannon! Of course, I only got the guard up when I. Here we go! Mega Dollar on cannon! Which only hit one of you. And didn't actually KO anyone. I like the blue flames that it leaves, though. Oh no, Yusuke has one of the Megadola on cannon parts. We must defeat him and reclaim it for ourselves. Oh, 
You know what I want to do? If I if I do ever get around to doing a playthrough of, of Persona 5, I want to see if it's possible to actually recreate Smash Bros. Arsene, like, in the original game. I'm sure somebody's already done it by this... Okay, perfect opportunity to snag a lot of people in this. Who did I get? Did I get... A, I think I only got one of them, yeah. But I'm sure someone's already done it at this point. You need an Arsene with Aegon, Tetrakhan, Makarakan. Some kind of flight ability, maybe? Okay, there's a final smash in play. And we saw how badly that wrecked me last time, so let's not have that happen again. He's just walking up slowly, isn't he? Maybe the thing with this fight is not to damage them too much, because then they'll get sudden final smashes like that. Well, thankfully you missed horribly. Ah, Edge Garden. I mean, regarding that Smash Arsene thing, I, I have definitely seen, like, I've seen endgame viable Arsene, like, builds that people have done. Like, Arsene's stats at high levels are definitely, like, viable for the endgame bosses. I've seen them. It's just the huge amount of, like, prison sacrifices and that are required to get it up there. Wow, really? You got it? <laughs> Let's just hang on the edge to avoid that. What? Well, that was dumb. I wonder if I wonder if I can Makara calm that. Hey, how many? I only got Chrome. Okay, yeah, right, that is an automatic KO if they're above a certain percentage, that's good. And now it is War of the Waifus, I guess, because it's just Arn and... Oh, now it's just Arn! But now Joker himself is going to appear soon. Yeah, there we go. And now it's time for Joker to face his shadow. Which I don't think he really did in his home game, but... Yeah, as I'd expect, you're pretty aggressive. Okay, wrong one. I keep losing track of which one I am. Attacked in completely the wrong direction there. His Persona meter's a little ahead of mine. Oh, nice. Oh, great, he's got two of them. I think I've got one though, so... Aha! My Persona came out at exactly the right time. Okay, I can't lose this now. Gotta finish this. Come on, other Joker. Okay, 
Okay, got him with the reflect eyes. Episode is back. That was really fast, actually. And there we go. Done. That one, I don't think that was as bad as Gino. That one was actually pretty fun if you do it right. Because you have the daybreak parts to help you, and uh, yeah, all done. 10,000 gold for that. I, I saw the Phantom Thieves Spirit actually show up in the shop a few times, but I wanted to get it legitimately. Yeah, that's all. So overall, this was kind of fun. I'm a little annoyed there was only one four-star spirit, honestly. Uh, the equal fight was a really cool concept. Uh, a lot of these were also pretty interesting. The, the Phantom Thieves fight was great. I look forward to seeing what later DLC spirit boards will be like. So with that, this video is over, and I'll see you next time for probably the Fire Emblem character classic mode. So see you then.